What does the term geography mean, and what concepts and topics are a part of geography? The word geography originally came from the Greek words geo, meaning of the earth, and graph, meaning to write. In other words, writing about or describing the earth. Today, the word geography is defined as the study of places and the complex relationships between people and their environments. The people who apply the principles of geography are called geographers. What do geographers do? Some geographers study the physical world. They examine the geology of our planet, climate, and vegetative regions and other physical or natural features and forces of the Earth. Other geographers prefer to study aspects of human or cultural geography, including settlement patterns, customs, and beliefs. What do geographers mean when they talk about culture? Culture can be defined as a way of life that distinguishes a people from another group. These distinguishing factors or cultural traits can be reflected in a people's religion, language, system of government, customs, and beliefs. These traits can be passed on from one generation to the next. When discussing the concept of culture, there are some other terms you should be familiar with. They are culture region, culture heart, cultural diffusion, acculturation, and cultural assimilation. A culture region is an area occupied by people who share one or more cultural traits. For example, all the Spanish-speaking countries in South America form a culture region. Their common cultural trait is their language. A culture hearth is a place where important ideas began and from which they spread to other areas. This term is frequently used to describe regions where, in ancient times, major traits of human culture first developed. One of the major culture hearths was in a region now referred to as Southwest Asia or the Middle East. The center of this culture hearth was known as Mesopotamia, it was located between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in the country we now call Iraq. Frequently referred to as the cradle of civilization, it was in this region that humanity first learned to tame and herd animals and to grow crops. The first crude form of writing called cuneiform was also developed here. Other nearby culture hearths include two located in the Nile River Valley in Northeast Africa and another in the Indus River Valley in what is present-day Pakistan. The culture hearth for East Asia was China, located along the eastern Huang Ha River Valley. In the Americas, the first culture hearth was centered around Teotihuacan in Mexico. The language, art forms, technology, and systems of government that were developed here influenced many of the surrounding regions. 
Sometimes changes in culture come from within a culture as the result of a new invention or discovery. Other changes come from a process geographers call cultural diffusion. Cultural diffusion is the process whereby ideas, innovations, and attitudes spread throughout a culture. Usually, cultural traits are spread from one individual or society to another individual or society by some form of trade or interaction. When these traits are adopted or adapted by a new group, it is called acculturation. Acculturation, therefore, is the process of accepting, borrowing, and exchanging traits between cultures. Examples of acculturation are all around us. The beds most of us sleep on are based on a design that originated in the Near East, which is now the Middle East and Northeast Africa region. Its design was also modified by craftsmen in Northern Europe. Likewise, the pajamas many of us sleep in were invented in India. And the soap we use to wash our hands in the morning is an invention of the ancient Gauls who lived in the country we now call France. The ancient Lydians are given credit for the invention of coins. The Lydians once populated an area in Western Asia Minor on the Aegean Sea. The plates we eat off of are an invention of the Chinese. And some of the utensils we use, such as spoons and forks, were actually invented in Italy. Our morning newspaper is a combination of the invention of paper by the Chinese and the printing process developed in Germany. With the mass communication we have today, the process of cultural diffusion is even more widespread than ever. Our final term associated with culture is called cultural assimilation. Cultural assimilation refers to the process wherein immigrants lose or give up some of their unique ethnic traits to better blend into their newly adopted culture. This can include learning the language or customs of their new homeland. Some people may even adopt new names in order to fit in. Does geography have anything to do with history and economics? Yes, especially human geography. History does not take place in a vacuum. It occurs in some physical setting, many times in direct response to the physical conditions of the specific setting. For example, did you notice that four of the five culture hearts were developed along rivers? And many strategic battles throughout history have been won or lost as a result of the terrain of the battlefield. For instance, the extreme cold of the Russian winter was a crucial factor in defeating the Nazi invasion of Stalingrad during World War II. Likewise, countries like Japan and the British Isles have rarely been invaded because they were island nations and were difficult to attack. And as with the westward expansion of the United States, the need for more land and resources had a significant impact on both history and economics. The economics of a nation are closely linked to the raw materials found in that nation. These materials, called natural resources, can include such things as coal, petroleum, iron, bauxite, and gold. Partly as a result of their large landmass, nations like the United States and Russia are blessed with many mineral assets. Other nations like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait have only one major resource, oil. Still others, like Japan, have very little mineral wealth. They are considered resource poor and must trade with other nations for almost all their raw materials. Most of the resources we have mentioned, iron, coal, petroleum, and so forth, are considered non-renewable resources. These are resources that cannot be replaced once they have been used. Other resources, like vegetation and soil, are considered renewable resources. These are resources that the environment continues to supply or replace as they are used. That is, of course, if we give nature a chance to do its job. What other sciences or studies are related to geography? 
Other sciences that relate or overlap with the study of geography include geology, which is the study of the composition, the structure, and the history of the earth. Geomorphology, the study of the landforms or physical features of the earth and the relationships between these landforms and the geological structures below, including the physical and chemical interactions between the earth's surface and the natural forces acting upon it. Meteorology, the study of the atmosphere, especially the physical processes that occur there, including atmospheric pressure, precipitation, clouds, wind, and sunshine. And oceanography, which is the science dealing with the study of the oceans, their structures, plant life, currents, and the character of seawater. But perhaps the most closely related discipline of all is cartography. Cartography is the art and science of making maps. As we have seen throughout this program, maps are the basic tools of geographers and can be used to display many kinds of information. Some of the numerous types of maps are Physical maps, which show physical features and land and water elevations. Political maps, which show boundaries between nations and other features such as capitals and other major cities. Natural vegetation maps, which show various forms of plant life and where they are located. And population density maps, which show the average number of people per square mile in a region. Still other maps can depict climatic regions, income levels, language groups, ethnic groups, and more. Truly, there are maps for every purpose. So to answer the question, what is geography all about? It is about all of us and the world in which we live. Thank you.